Hello again, St. Lucia, and welcome to the program, Agriculture on the Move. I am Philip Sidney, your host. Today with me is uh, Dr. Aurea King Snack, who is our Chief Veterinary Officer in the Department of Agriculture. Welcome to the program, Madam. Good morning, and thank you for inviting us today. Yes, long, long, long overdue. Eh? Yeah, very, very, very <laughs> much. So. And I, I must say, she's sitting in for Dr. Melville, <laughs> a good friend and my good friend too. <laughs> uh, viewers, today we are discussing a very important uh, topic issue. It has affected us in the past, and we're talking about the tropical bone tick, better known as the amblyomma tick. Um, I'm sure those of you uh, in the 1996 uh, would realize that there was this um, program to eradicate uh, that tick, but of course there's a reemergence of the, this tick. So, Dr. King, uh, could you tell St. Lucia again, maybe to refresh the memory, as we call the tropical bond tick, TBT, what is TBT? Well, TBT, tropical bond tick, Amblyomma variegatum, pretty tick. These are all the names <laughs> that are associated <laughs> with that tick. Um, it was a, it's a hard tick, and it usually affects livestock. Mm. So you would have um, cattle, sheep, and goat being the main host. But it has had cases, we've had cases where it has affected um, horses, even dogs. Okay. Right? This tick um, was introduced into St. Lucia in 1996. It first came into the region through an importation of livestock from Africa, its origin is Africa, to Guadeloupe. That was in the early 19, 1900s. And as a result, after that, it was confined to more or less four islands within the region until, that was, until 1960, thereabout. Mm -hmm. By 1980, it was spreading so rapidly that it had have now affected 18 countries in the region, St. Lucia being one of them. So um, what, has, what, what, what the importance of that tick to us is, it had, there are three, three main um, problems that this tick kind of cause in the livestock industry. Mm -hmm. The first one is where they attach to the, the host, so the, the biting area where they bite onto the host, it can cause abscesses, it could also, they would they feed on the blood of the host, so that of course affects production and productivity in the animal. It causes them to be weak and stressed out and so on. Mm -hmm. The other um, component is that it is a vector of two bacteria, bacteria, one which causes dermatophilosis, which is a skin infestation, and a second one which causes a fatal disease called caudriosis, yeah. which is also called heart water. Yeah. Luckily for St. Lucia, we have never had any cases of caudriosis, but we do have cases of dermatophilosis on Ireland. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the spread of this, the, the tick was first thought of, well, it spread so rapidly in the region, and we were wondering what was the cause. So it, theories have, have proven that one of the major causes of the spread from island to island was one, by exportation and importation of of infected or infested animals mm. to the cattle egret or migratory birds. Ah, yes. So these birds are actually, I think, in, in Guadeloupe, they marked some of those cattle egrets. They marked the wings with a certain dye. Mm -hmm. And these animals were found all the way as far up as Florida Keys. Wow. So it showed that they were able to move the tick in the nympho um, stage or in the, 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 the adult stage. Mm -hmm from one country to the next. Those are the Bhutan. white birds that you normally yes, see sitting on the on cows. The cows right? yeah. Yes, ah, okay. so they were able to transport the tick from one island to the next. So this was attributed to the widespread mm. um, situation that, that existed. Now as a result of that, and of course that brought up a lot of alarm for the US. So a group of international organizations like AICA, CARICOM, um, 
international and regional, sorry, ICA, CARICOM, FAO, and the USDA, they came together and they funded a program which we call the CAP, Caribbean, Caribbean Amblyoma Program. Mm -hmm. And this program, the objective of this program was to try to eradicate the tick on the islands of the Lesser Antilles. So um, originally it was a twofold, which interlapped, a two-phase program. The first phase would have been blanket treatment. Mm -hmm. So all infested animals would have to be treated by the owners mm -hmm. and of course um, with the support of the, the veterinary division or the, um, the livestock component in whichever country that, that, that um, was under the program. Mm -hmm. We had nine countries <coughs> participating and um, the second phase was after the treatment was, would have been done, there would be some form of surveillance program to ensure that we had not gotten any more hot spots or the, 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 the tick had been completely controlled or eradicated. Okay. For St. Lucia, we were very successful. We were able to take on that initiative and move very quickly mm -hmm. with it. It was introduced in 1996, as I said, and by 2001, we had already gotten provisionally free status. Yeah, that was a vigorous um, uh, campaign, eh? Yes, it was a yeah. vigorous campaign. Mm -hmm. So we still had one or two hot spots, and the agreement was after we had gotten the, the, that, that status, we would have gone in and um, stamp out those animals that were still mm -hmm. um, infested. Mm -hmm. This was a bit of a challenge to us because some of those animals were wild, they were not tethered, so it was difficult for us to actually um, trap them and treat. So why did you shoot them? Well, <laughs> because of humane, you know, human, um, animal rights and all yeah, of these but things. Yeah, but at the so end of the day, it, it, would, it would not get us to the point, to that, the we point that we are in that we are now, right yes. now. Very yes. true. Yes. So, um, after that was done, I think in 2003, we were able to see there was an, another upsurge mm -hmm. of, of infestation, mainly in the south of the island. This was, was taken care of. It was addressed. And again, in 2006, it's, it showed up its face again. Wow. Now, we are attributing to the re resurgence and the spread of the tick for many, for many reasons. One, the CAP program had ended in 2006. Mm -hmm. So we, ne we did not have the support, financial and, and human resources that we needed to continue the program mm -hmm. successfully. Secondly, we had movements of animals mm -hmm. from infected areas to non-infested areas. And as a result, we have implemented what we call a transfer permit. So if, for example, you want to purchase an animal or you want to take an animal from an infested area, you would need to present yourself to the Beauceju office or the Ministry of Agriculture, the vet division, and where we would go in and do an inspection of the animal mm -hmm. and treatment to ensure that the animal moves from that area to the next without bringing any nymphs or any um, adult ticks mm -hmm. to a new area and of course causing infestation. So um, that was another reason. Another cause was, you know, we all big in, in landscaping. Persons always want lawn grass and so on. These ticks can survive in soil for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And therefore, moving those commodities, you're also moving younger stages of the life cycle of the tick from an infested area to a non-infested area. Mm -hmm. So all of these things were components that attributed to the resurgence of the tick on island. Yeah, but without finance, I mean, what I'm saying is, okay, the first phase was done. Okay, mm -hmm. we, we got that status. Mm -hmm. Knowing that there were hot spots, um, what's happening now, we know it, it would happen. So I'm saying to you, okay, why wasn't there a, a program to get finance for the continuation or, or to treat the hot spots to avoid us getting to where we are today? Right. You're very true. You're very correct. Attempts were made. Um, and what we were faced with is getting the availability of the ticicide the or the caricide of choice, which is beticol. In the region before, it was very readily available. Right now, we're having a challenge mm -hmm. getting the beticol and landing the beticol here at a reasonable price. Um, um, right now, we are, we are in contact with a few suppliers mm -hmm. and we're negotiating to see if we could get a, a more frequent supply okay, okay. so that we could 
keep on on top of of, of things. Again, the 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 life cycle we'll of the tick. Spot mm -hmm. and we for a break. No problem. You're watching Agriculture in the Move. Stay tuned. When you're out at sea, there are no service stations along the way or supermarkets for a quick stop if you need something. It is essential that everything you will need while at sea is on the boat before you leave. That's why pre-sea checks are so important. Checks should be carried out by more than one person to ensure that all essentials are on board. Everything on board? Yeah, everything on board. Yeah, everything on board. Yeah, everything on Pre-sea checks should include food stores, extra water and fuel, navigational equipment, safety gear and communication yep. equipment. Okay, light out, sir. That's what I'm doing. Before heading out to sea, always ensure that all equipment is in working order, you are stocked up on food and also extra fuel. Call the lighthouse to inform them of your voyage plan and inform someone responsible of your departure time and estimate the time of arrival back on shore. For more information on obtaining a license to fish, contact the Department of Fisheries at 468-4143. Welcome back to the program. Uh, with me is Dr. Aurea King Snack, who is our chief vet in uh, the Department of Agriculture. And of course, we're discussing a very important pest, which is the emblematic TBT. Doc, okay, let's go back a bit. Um, what do you think you should have done, or the department should have done, um, knowing that? Where we, where we are now, mm -hmm. we should not have been here. Um, what do you think you, uh, that you would have done to avoid that situation? I, I'm bearing in mind, I'm saying, you know, the funding, the availability of the BT call, mm -hmm. etc. But then what do you think you, to, 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 to pass that barrier, what do you think you, you, you would have done? Okay, I'm um, just thinking about it, you know, and um, looking at the life cycle of the tick. Mm -hmm. I believe that the three-year program that we had mm -hmm. was not sufficient. Okay. We should have moved it up to four years okay. because the, the terrestrial stage of the, the, the tick takes about 46, more or less 46 months. Okay. So the three years was not sufficient for us to completely eradicate. Okay. So that was one of the things, one of the, 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 the situations that we, we, we should have looked at. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, um, what we what could have been done is during the although the the the, the amblyomma the cap program was was over, mm -hmm. we sh probably should have still continued doing a rigorous treatment in those hot spots right, areas. Right, right. We did as as I said earlier, we did have a challenge because most of those animals in those areas were ferile, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it would have needed again finances for us to be able to build in proper what we would call a, a, a crush mm -hmm. to be able to corral the animals in to mm -hmm. ensure that we would be able to treat them okay. adequately. Um, but it's, it's, it's more or less, maybe we should have been a little more um, rigorous okay. in, the, in the continuation of the treatment. Okay. Given the fact that, of course, we were very limited with the, 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 resources. Beti, the resources mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. basic oil that, that we would need, also probably encourage our farmers and our producers when they site the ticks to ensure that they would contact us. So the little resources that we had, we could have targeted mm -hmm. those areas with the sightings. Even if we, we, were, we were not able to, to treat, or we didn't treat at the time, but maybe we should have continued with the public yes, awareness yes, campaigns. Yes, so yes. when persons see those ticks, mm -hmm. that they would have reported it to us and then we would have come in and do what we had to do. Okay. So a little more, we, we probably needed to do a little more enforcing and mm -hmm. a little you know, stricter control. Okay. Yes. Okay, moving forward. Mm -hmm. it's, it's here again. It's here again. Good, okay. <laughs> what is the program moving forward? Okay, so f right now we, are, we have gotten um, a, a program running and it will be a program where we would have gone through again blanket treatment of all the hotspots. Where are the hotspots? 
So it's more or less in the south of the, the island, Region 5, Region 4, and Region 6 are the main areas. Okay. We have seen one or two sightings in Region 1 that has been addressed. We also see a few cases of dermatophilosis in Bexo area, in the Mark area. area yeah. And um, we attribute it to yeah. persons probably purchasing animals mm -hmm. from, for slaughter, right, for mm -hmm. slaughter mm -hmm. from the infested areas. So the program that we're running now, there's a heavy component on um, public awareness, right. right? To remind persons about the tick and what was done in the past and what they should do and those that were not there during the time of the tick program to teach them mm -hmm. what has to be done when they cite those those ticks what 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 they need to do and to to teach them how to use the basic call that we are now providing for treatment so dr king what you're saying the ticky side the basic call uh, will be given free to the farmers so that they can treat the animals. So that, that needs to be spelled out clearly because uh, since your objective here is to eradicate, mm -hmm. so by any means necessary, you know, to ensure that that happens, then the, the biticol is free. That's Correct. what you're saying. That's, what you that's say. exactly what we're saying. But of course, there are conditions. Eh, what are the conditions? Okay, so it would mean that our, our officers would be the ones going in and doing the treatments. Okay. Okay, so we'll be given free the, the treatment for free, mm -hmm. right? But we would not be selling the biticol because we want to ensure that it is used properly. adequately. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. How are you going to sensitize the public, the farmers out there, how to those persons who were not involved before in the mm -hmm. first phase um, in 1996, with that re-emergence of the pest, how are they going to know that that's the pest? Well, we do have um, some paraphernalia and we also plan on doing some town hall meetings as well. Mm -hmm. We have engaged a, a company to assist us in, in our PR mm -hmm. program. So all of this is to ensure that we would be able to put in things on the TV, jingles, this more or less the same the things same that thing were that done in, in 1996, mm -hmm. just of course a bit updated, and so that they would be aware of what to look for. Okay. And of course we would be doing the one-on-ones when we meet persons, meet farmers, etc. Okay. So, okay, how would you know uh, that how successful is it and where, uh, when it has reached the uh, eradication point? Well, that's where our surveillance come in. Okay. So we would know, it would, uh, of course, the incidence would reduce, meaning the number of animals that are infested will reduce significantly. The spots, the hot spots or the areas that have been infested would be reduced significantly as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. And that will give us an idea during our monitoring and our surveillance of how effective our program is running. Okay. The butchers, Mm -hmm. who are going around the island to purchase animals. Uh, how are you going to really monitor that to ensure that you don't have infested animals moving from one point to the next? Well, we have been sensitizing them as well. And we've also, during our anti-mortem inspections mm -hmm. before slaughter, if an animal is down with dermatophilosis, it will not be allowed to enter the, the, right, the food chain. So that is a deterrent for them as well because they've purchased the animal for slaughter and they cannot make any money out of it. Mm -hmm. So they are aware and they know of the implications so they would not, well at least we have not had any, after this, the few incidences that we've had, we've not had any of them purchasing any of the infested animals. Okay, yes. good. Okay, we are due for another break. Stay tuned, we'll be back soon. Pour contrôler les maladies si vous avez il est nécessaire et bien important pour tenir tout équipement, particulièrement les machines spray en bonne condition. Toujours nettoyer les machines après vous servir et mettre en condition bon service, même quand les gens vous recommandent pour tenir. Depuis que vous avez servi chimique pour contrôler les maladies fixes si vous avez il est absolument important pour protéger le corps et prendre en chaque précaution. Operator, ces machines spray pour servir habillement qui est bien protégé. Servir overall, goggles, boots et gloves pour empêcher que les chimiques touchent la peau et bien expirer. 
Pour plus d'informations à ce manier pour traiter et contrôler la maladie si vous avez un peu à ce plantation ou un jardin, vous pouvez téléphoner au département pour ménager si vous avez un numéro 451-549-Yonne, et bien 451-5894, et bien email à bpmu.candw.lc. Commission Sala a sorti Hod Ministère de l'Agriculture, ensemble avec Fonds Coopération Internationale et Développement, Hod Pays République la Chine, Taïwan. Welcome back to the program. Dr. King, ok, people have been asking, for example, is it safe? That's, that's for some reason um, you all do not detect it. Mm -hmm. um, a butcher decides he's slaughtering because these guys. As far as they're concerned, they want to make money. And probably the farmer now, in knowing that it is infested, he wants to get rid of it, okay? And below the radar, it is slaughtered. Um, is that meat for consumption? Is it safe for consumption? Dermatophilosis, which is what is more or less affecting our, our livestock through the tick um, locally, it's not a, it does not cause any foodborne illnesses, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. But even if, when we do our inspections and an animal has dermatophilosis, we do not pass that animal for slaughter. Mm -hmm. Reason being, even if it's a skin infection and you could just take out the hide and so on, sometimes there's a possibility that the, the skin or the infec infection, they might have secondary infections infection, yes. and it yeah, may have yeah. caused some problems inside and mm. it might become, the animal might become septic mm -hmm. and the animal might be sick. Right. So to avoid any of that, once an animal presents signs with dermatophilosis, especially if it's in a very bad stage, mm -hmm. we do not pass that animal for slaughter. Okay. So it would not be stamped and an, an anti-mortem certi certificate would not be issued. Therefore, when public health comes in, if there is no certificate for anti-mortem passing that animal, then the animal would not be allowed to be put on the, the shelf for, for consumption. Okay, great. The other concern is, you mentioned earlier, uh, the other secondary hosts, like uh, the horses and the dogs and other. How are you going to control that? Well, that's a challenge, and I suspect that too might be one of the reasons why we have the spread again. When we were doing the program, we were focusing more on livestock, um, cattle, sheep and goats, etc. But we did not look at wild animals and other animals that could act as mechanical host. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why right now it's very important that we push the public awareness campaign. So persons who have horses, who have dogs, who have other animals in their vicinity, could also do their checks. And if they do see that pretty tick, and believe me, you would know an ambi amblyomma tick when you see one. Mm. Um, when they do see it, then they would contact the veterinary division and we would advise accordingly. Mm -hmm. We would also recommend pet owners to always have their animals, especially if they're in an area with, with a lot of ticks. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily have to be the amblyomma. It could also be the bophilus, which is another tick that affects us. Mm -hmm that um, they continue using the ticky size, the acaricides, control the parasites, both internal and external parasites on their pets as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a holistic approach. It's not only the government component, but we need everybody to play a part for us to be able to eradicate. So will there be a continuous preventative measure? Because I, I know you mentioned about total eradication. Um, that again with the first phase in 1996 I, i'm sure that's what you all were aiming to mm -hmm. it didn't happen um what is in place to ensure that it is totally eradicated and you're sure it's done well again um the first phase would be the blanket um treatments mm -hmm. and surveillance is important yeah. so we will continue our surveillance and we will be relying heavily also on the public mm -hmm to let us know of any sightings so that we could intervene as quickly as possible. Any um, success to any eradication program depends on early warnings or early, early detection and action. Mm -hmm. So if we don't see it very early or we're not aware of it very early, then what has happened now will continue to happen. So we're hoping that we could have the support of the, the public when it comes to the eradication of the tick. The problem you had before um, in areas like in the south, you mentioned 
uh, those animals that were wild. Mm -hmm. Okay, I remember in Mulashik there were quite a few of them, and because of the terrain, it was difficult, difficult. to get them. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you are faced with that problem, what are you going to do? Well, under the, the, the CAP program, what was the, the objective was if we were not able to eradicate fully and there were animals that we could not treat, there was a possibility of doing the stamping out, meaning that we would have to sacrifice all of those animals. You shoot them? Shoot them. <laughs> I, <laughs> used, I, used the <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say shoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we'd have to sacrifice those animals. Mm -hmm. um, but the logistics in terms of Comp how do we compensate the farmers for that? How all of these things have to be discussed mm -hmm. before an act uh, such an action can be taken. I mean, in any control program, that's what, that's what usually the end product is. Mm -hmm. To be able to safeguard the rest of the population, you mm -hmm. would have to sacrifice a few. So um, that might be the end product mm -hmm. if we're not able to satisfy the... Um, program that we want to, the, the, the objectives that we want but, to but achieve. But would, would you give the, the farmer a choice, tell him, hello, um, okay, you, we know you have animals out there, mm -hmm. okay? We're giving you a certain time to get them right. in the corral. Right. If you cannot, then you know we're going to shoot them, right. okay? Now mm -hmm. the point is, I mean, he, he'll have to tell you how many he has, because mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, if you shoot mm -hmm. two, three animals, that, that guy will say, that's yes, his. <laughs> yes, so how, how, how are you all going to work And that, that again is why we also, with the stick program, we're, we're also initiating a national identification system. Right, right. So we're hoping that we could tag all our small ruminants mm -hmm. and our cattle. Did we, this would be a branding program. We used to have a yeah. tagging program, yes, but yes. we had some hiccups with that. Um, mm -hmm. With the well, we used to use the air tag, mm -hmm. and because of the size of the air tag, what used to happen is that the animals used to get it used to get caught in the brushes. Mm -hmm. The animals it used to rip out the some of the airs. It used to cause mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. problems, or the the tag itself would come out, mm -hmm. and you would not have any you know way of identifying. So we have looked into different. Um, methods of identification. We're still going for the air tags, but this time t the tags are a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. And um, that is where we're going to head in terms of identifying our animals on our Final animals. words from your mom? Well, final words. This TBT program is a very important program for us, for our livestock industry, if we want to save our livestock industry. And I'm calling on all producers as well as general public to in the event that they cite those and those ticks to please contact the veterinary and livestock services division so that we will be able to obtain our objective of eradicating the tick and helping us to sustain our livestock sector thank you doc i wish you success and i know this time it will be eradicated it will right be. It definitely <laughs> will i wish be. you all the success in the program okay thank Thanks you very much there. thank you I was speaking with Dr. Aurea King Snack, who is our Chief Vet Officer in the Department of Agriculture. People, please, is very important. Our livelihood depends on that. We need to have the throughput for our, our new um, program. So please report any sightings to the vet division so that we can control. Remember, agriculture is our business and eat fresh. St. Lucia's best. My name is Philip Sidney. Goodbye. Thank you, Doc. Agriculture on the move. 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 Agriculture on the move.